This is a quick video to talk about ER collets that are being used on the Myford lathe. Uh, this is a Super 7 with a long bed and I'll describe how to remove a three draw chuck, a neat way of doing it that I do, and also how to set up your ER collets and do that. In the meantime, I will shoot a separate video of this so you can see these a little bit better. This is my way of removing the three draw chuck. I'll uh, set up a, a dummy piece of bar stock and lock it in place. Make sure that the spindle lock is in place and then I'll put my regular drill truck on there. Now we should be able to move this once it's loose it will unscrew this will unscrew just fine now you can slide it completely out of the way uh, the same thing with replacing it. You can easily replace it and you don't have to worry about wiggling it to get an alignment. Once that's on there, loosen this one and then thread the chuck on. And it goes on very easy that way. But now what we'll do is we'll also put on the ER collet, which uh, is very similar. So normal removal, we'll remove this one. get it completely out of the way and I leave that brass bar for future replacements. Usually the first thing I do on the spindle is I'll give it a drop of oil. This way if it gets locked on it'll make the threads come off a little bit easier. Don't need to do that every single time, but it's a good idea. So, collet chuck goes on. And this particular collet chuck came from Myford, so now it's tight. Now we can release the spindle lock. Now we're ready to go. This particular ER collet that I'm using for my lathe is an ER25. And basically, with a little bit of focus on that, that is the collet. And it's very important that you snap it into the nut on the first go. But it is important that you have the right size nut. This is an ER25 nut and an ER25 collet comes in all different sizes. Snap that ring in there and then you can screw it onto the collet chuck nozzle. Here you can see the collet nut and I may put the photo of this in there but you can see there's a ring in there it looks like it's offset and it's real important that you snap the collet into that ring first and you can feed it into this light angle. You can just make out that ring in there and it's slightly askew and what you do is you take the collet which is kind of at that angle and you snap it in place and you can actually hear it click in so that it's all the way flush in there. Then you can screw the collet nut and the collet onto the collet chuck. One of the nice things about using the collet is you can mount round tubing in it and it will grip the round tubing very good uh, and 
hold it in place very nice. The way you tighten it is you tighten the nut all the way. On this particular one, there is a wrench in the bar, and we go ahead and tighten it. Once it's tight, you're ready to do whatever operation you want, say cut this off or machine a piece of bar stock. One of the nice features about the ER collets, and here's a whole set of them, is that uh, they're very forgiving in the size stock you put in there. The C5 type collet requires stock that's almost exactly the size that's specified on the collet. With the ER collets, you can put in a piece of stock that is somewhat loose in there, and it'll grip it very good because of the number of jaws that are actually tightening on it. Um, this is another type of ER collet, not a chuck that I have. And this has an R8 spindle on it. But it's similar in type. It has the ER25 collet. And the ER25 collets, or any of the numbers, are all very compatible. In other words, if you have one ER25 nut, it will go on any of the other ER25 chucks that you have, or collets. Another accessory you can get with the ER set, and I think you can get that with just about any other kind of collet as well, are collet blocks. In this case, this is a square one, and this is a hex one. Uh, very, very versatile. So what happens is if you have your stock in the lathe in an ER collet and you want to transfer it to a square block on the milling machine, you can merely unscrew the collet with the stock in it and then screw it onto the square or hex one and without losing your registration for centering. This particular set is not ideal because the nut is bigger than the, the square or the hex stock, so it's a little bit more difficult, but it can be managed with shims and, and other pieces. It would have been great if this had been large enough to be larger than the diameter of the nut. It would have made it much, much more useful. One last final thought about the ER collets. Uh, this particular one is accurate to within, oh, two thousandths or less of run out. Uh, it really makes for removing the stock and replacing it uh, much, much more useful as you don't have to worry about as long as centering, like in a three jaw chuck, if you remove the stock, it will probably be quite a bit out if you try to replace it. Um, the other thing that's unique about this particular collet chuck is it came with a backing plate. So a backing plate was screwed onto the spindle before I mounted the chuck so that you get a very accurate registration for your particular machine. That is the ideal way to mount the collet chuck. There are other Collar chucks that have a um, fixture on the back that you can mount it either in a three jaw or a four jaw chuck. And putting it in a three jaw chuck really defeats the purpose of the accuracy of an ER type collet. Uh, putting it in a four jaw chuck would be able to dial in that correct ac accuracy, but uh, with a lot more effort. And one final word. Uh, I am no expert on this type of machining. I've learned by doing and reading. There's a great deal of literature on the use of ER collets. There are many, many different numbers for whatever purpose. I chose the 25, ER25, because it had the most appropriate spindle and for my particular lathe, which has a half inch 
through spindle, uh, getting a larger ER collet would have still be able to do that for half inch stock, but uh, I really don't have a need to hold much larger pieces than about three quarters of an inch. Um, there's always that time when it happens that way, but in this particular case, that's why I bought the ER25. They make them, they go down to smaller sizes. This one has a nice size range all the way down from, I think, one millimeter on up, and uh, which is more than accurate for the kind of, and appropriate for the kind of work that I'm doing, which is uh, gauge one steam locomotives and small stationary engines. Hopefully, I've given somebody some information about this and it will help you out. Thank you.